So instead, what we do is the following, right? So let us say I have uh, now a capacitor. Slightly digress. So say I have a capacitor. I'm interested to process the voltage across the capacitor, but when I'm connecting it to my second stage or succeeding stage, I should not make sure I draw any current from this. But of course, to charge my second stage, I should be providing some current. Second stage drawing current is something I can't avoid. So if I don't want to provide current from the capacitor, I should provide some other path for this current. Okay. Let's say I have something here that provides the current. And I am, yeah, let's come to that. So we want to process the capacitor voltage. Okay. But make sure that I don't draw any current from here. Any current required to charge my second stage comes from this black box. Okay. Now, uh, let us say the capacitor has stored some voltage Va. I want to make sure this V out is exactly equal to Va. So what should this voltage be? That should be 0. Fine. But if I go and connect it to 0 like this, what will happen? You, provide a, you now provided a path for the current to the capacitor. Now you can no longer guarantee that the current from the capacitor is 0. right? So which means I can't go and directly connect it to ground. I should connect it to a ground which is giving 0 potential but it has high impedance. What kind of ground do you think does this? Virtual ground, that is the idea of virtual ground. So this should no longer be a ground, this should be a virtual ground. So what pops up to your mind if you hear virtual ground? Op amp, just an op amp or op amp should be in some configuration. An op amp in negative feedback can guarantee virtual ground. Okay. So now uh, let's do that. Where will I draw? Okay. So we'll draw it here. So the black box now must be what? What should this be? It should be an op amp. Okay. If I do this, if the op amp is a negative feedback, this is my virtual ground. So my capacitor must be connected to the virtual ground. So I go and do this. So now this op amp is enforcing this to be at zero. So if the voltage across the capacitor is Va, output will be equal to Va. And if my second stage is drawing any current, do you think any current can flow in this path? Why? This is the input of the op amp that has high impedance, no current flows. So we have preserved the charge stored in the capacitor and the op amp will provide any current inputs. Remember op amp by definition is a voltage controlled voltage source. To maintain this voltage, it can provide any amount of current ideal. So if we can do this arrangement, I can properly measure the voltage across the capacitor without disturbing it. Okay. But here uh, if I do this, to do this I should have both terminals of the capacitor to be accessible. But in my case, this is grounded. So I can't directly go and do this. right? So the thought process is, if I can't directly measure this voltage, I mean if I can't measure the voltage across this capacitor directly, but I can measure the voltage across this capacitor, why don't I transfer the voltage or the charge to this case? I want to process the charge stored in this capacitor, but I find that if I have an arrangement like this, it works. So why don't I try to transfer the charge? So once again, let us say now you want to transfer the charge stored in this capacitor. After you have transferred the charge fully, what will be the voltage across the capacitor? I mean, you have transferred the entire charge in this capacitor to this guy, let us say. After transferring the charge fully, what will be the charge stored in this capacitor? Which means voltage across the capacitor is? So you want to make the voltage across the capacitor zero. Fine. So once again, I can try to do this. If I do this, all charges go to ground. So again, this should not be a normal ground. This should be a virtual ground. 
and it should be the same virtual ground so that so what you do is basically go and connect it. So let me redraw this. So what we do is the following. So let me copy paste this. Let it be there. So I'll take this. So once again, in the first sampling phase, we were doing something like this. We are sampling the input across this capacitor C. Let me call this CF. Okay. So uh, the voltage or the charge stored in this plate of the capacitor is what? Plus C or minus C? This is plus CV in. Okay. Fine. So which means the charge stored on this plate is minus CV in. So this is minus CV in. So now, after I do this connection, what is the voltage across the capacitor? Huh? Zero. The op amp is enforcing this to be at zero. So voltage across this capacitor is zero. So what is the charge in this capacitor now? Zero. So where do you think earlier this plate had minus CV in charge? Right? Now we are saying this charge has become zero. Where did the charge go? That's what you wanted. So the charge on this plate is what? Minus CV in. Charge on this plate is? Fine. So now tell me what is the output voltage? It is output voltage is basically this with respect to ground or this with respect to zero, both are same. That is basically the voltage across the capacitor in this polarity which means the voltage is CV in. Okay. So now you see this uh, gives a nice uh, flexibility for me to even basically scale my sample signal. No, but this is the current you want. See, this current is basically uh, the charge transfer from C to CF. That is something you want. Once the charge is transferred, if you the second state is drawing any current, that will not come in this part. Right? That will only come from this point. So now this is the circuit in two clock phases. We have to draw the complete circuit using all switches. So let's do that. So as usual, let me draw. My sampling network is still the same. I'm sampling in clock phase phi 1. I'm doing bottom plate sampling once again. Now my goal is to process this uh, charge stored in this capacitor and I want to process this charge. So I go and connect this plate of the capacitor to ground in second clock phase. And in that clock phase, I am transferring this charge to this fellow. So I go and is that okay? So here one minor change, I mean one minor addition you have to do, which is this. Uh, you have to in principle add a switch and reset this capacitor because if you don't do that what will happen is this in the first clock case this capacitor is sampling D in it is transferring this charge to this capacitor so the charge pushed in this capacitor is C times D in the second clock case this will again sample second input this will again transfer this charge this already had C times V in so the second charge will get added. So you make sure you clear the memory of the capacitor. So you put the switch here. But thing is, if it's an ideal op amp, the moment you push this to zero, what can you say about this? 
that will also be set to 0. If it's an ideal op-amp, it's okay. But in practice, when you make op-amps, this will not be the case, so you have to do this. Okay, so this is one uh, variant of what is called a switch capacitor amplifier. Again, a matter of fact naming, circuit contains only switches capacitors and it amplifies the input, so why not switch cap amplifier. Is okay. So remember, we all started with the fact that we want to sample our signal and we started to see what are no what non-idealities I can have in that. So to tackle all the non-idealities, I do things one by one and then end up with this guy. So to recap, just to brush up, first we saw charge injection from this main switch was the issue. To solve this, first thing we did was you added bottom plate sampling. But then we saw when this bottom plate switch is off, you still have some off capacitance, you will have issues. So the solution was to subtract the charges to look at the charge stored on this node which will contain the off capacitance also. So you basically ground this guy and look at this voltage. But then we saw if you want to look at this voltage, I should not be drawing any current. So you have to do this and then you end up. Here. 